we're uh, recording this for those that can't uh, can't be here, and uh, we should have that up on the website uh, hopefully tomorrow, um, along with uh, copies of the slides if anybody um, wants to share them. Um, and uh, you can go back through all of our policy forums on the policy site, and uh, you know if you ever want something to help you sleep at night, um, rewatch the old ones. Uh, you're you're more than welcome to do that. <laughs> So um, for those that don't know me, my name is Jen Wisdall. I work with FAS United on the policy team. Um, this is our monthly policy forum where we talk about all things, you guessed it, policy. Um, so I'm very happy to have you here. I'm uh, excited that in January, uh, we will mark our anniversary of doing 24 uninterrupted months of, of policy forums. Um, so we're, we're really trying to make this something that uh, has some legs and some longevity. Um, so it always happens on the last Wednesday of the month. Um, so you, you can count on that. And it's open to anybody. Um, so even uh, you know if you have somebody that's outside the FASD world that uh, would like a little view in or uh, other members of your team, if you're, you're working with an organization, um, parents, caregivers, um, all are welcome. Uh, we, we really appreciate you taking time out of your day to, to be here. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Tom with the uh, brightest slide in the universe. <laughs> I like it in those, those beautiful circles, that beautiful logo. Hey, thank you, Jen, for uh, all the incredible work over those 24 months, or at least close to it, uh, with the Policy Center, uh, bringing us to where we are today. We're all going to hear about some very important updates and activities that we all need to, uh, to jump into. Very quickly, I want a quick uh, comment about uh, what's happening with FASD United. We just a couple of weeks ago had a fantastic uh, gala event here in Washington, D.C. I, I see Rebecca there, Rebecca Tulu, who was uh, our featured speaker at the event. You were so fantastic, so wonderful. Thank you for doing that. Uh, next year, you know, we're already thinking about next year. And the number one thing is to get an early date and to have our big event in conjunction with you know, our affiliates and advocates all coming to DC so we can all do this together. We're excited about that. We can be together and I hope that you'll be there next Friday. So it's Friday the 9th. That is the second annual Circle of Stars. Uh, there it is, uh, eight o'clock Eastern. We're gonna be live and we will be revealing the stars of the year in several categories. So I hope you'll tune in there. It's free, it's, it's great. Uh, it's a quick hour and fun. And if you remember, you were there last year, there's an after party where we can uh, uh, have fun with one another and visit. Uh, so those are two big things coming up. And somehow with the holidays coming, we have uh, more deadlines than I'd, uh, uh, that I'd like to even have to think about uh, this month uh, related to a lot of our important programs, including our work with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. We're getting very close to finalizing our work plans, and we're going to be uh, sharing that all with you also next year. But right now, there's a lot happening with policy. That's what's most important. Uh, so uh, I'm here with all of you to hear the, the latest on what we need to do there. Thanks, Jen. You're on mute, Jen. You'd think I would have had the hang of this by now. Goodness you me. Would, you would think so. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to chew gum? And <laughs> you know, I, I think oh. it's the, the walking and chewing gum at the same time. And I very, I apologize for that. So, all right. Um, I did want to share that our, um, for those of you that, that may or may not know, our Stars for Starla program, which is a youth recognition program, any youth for any reason at any time in any place can be recognized and um, sent an award uh, based on their own individual unique strengths and, and abilities. And one of the ways we fund that is through the sale of our Stars for Starla ornaments. Um, they're on sale now, designed by a youth with FASD. Um, you can get them on our website, and uh, that helps continue that program on. So I just wanted to put a brief plug in there for that, because um, that is a program very near and dear to my heart. Um, so 
Uh, Susan Ellsworth, you want to give a little quick affiliate update? Hi, everybody. I'm Susan Ellsworth. I am the um, network uh, affiliate network director and um, just have been so impressed to be part of these meetings and see all the work that the advocates have done across the country throughout these. Um, this past year has just been a whirlwind of activity and all the things that you have accomplished. And while you're out there working in your states and in your areas, if you run across groups that you think would make a great um, asset to the FASD United um, family, you have, uh, hook them up with us and have them get in touch with me. My email address is ellsworth at fasdunited.org. Susan? All right, Tom. Tom already talked about the uh, the circle of stars, and before we um, delve into the Respect Act, I'd like to introduce you to a couple new members of the FASD United team. Um, I have um, uh, Chris Melfi uh, has joined us, um, working in our office, uh, doing administrative support and all things uh, supporting me and everybody else there. Um, Chris comes from a nonprofit background. Chris, if you can raise your hand and do a little wave or unmute yourself and say hello. Um, when you call the FASD United office um, as often as possible, Chris will be the live human being answering your call um, so that we are connected and accessible and um, available to you um, more so now than ever. Um, so I'm very excited to have Chris on board. He comes from a, a nonprofit background and I feel very fortunate to have him as part of the team. And then I'd also like to introduce uh, Laura Bousquet. Um, for those of you that know our Family Navigator program, uh, Heather French has been working really hard on that program. We've served, uh, I believe it's 400, almost 400 um, uh, individuals or families uh, since the program implemented. And um, we added in a part-time role, uh, Laura Bousquet, uh, just a couple weeks ago to, to support Heather. So i um, very happy to have her as part of the team and that program expanding. So if you're seeing new, new faces at FASD United, um, we just wanted to let you know who, who they are. So Susan, going into the uh, FASD Respect Act, uh, my big reveal is... Uh, uh, kind of messed up, but we wanted to kind of go back to <laughs> basics and talk about how, um, you know, most of us, if, well, if you're anywhere near my age, saw that I'm just a bill um, schoolhouse rock, um, kind of, I can see some of you singing along to it, Trigger, I see you. Um, <laughs> but um, just the basics on on how we traditionally look at legislation and how it, at how we as lay people kind of think it happens and you know your bill gets introduced in the house of representatives and they vote on it and then it goes to the senate and they vote on it and then they meet in conference and make sure that all the the language mat matches up and you go to the president and it gets signed into law and if we reach out to our legislators and ask them to do something and they're on board with it this is what it takes and and absolutely that is a huge part of it However, this is uh, what we've seen in the 117th, whoops, the 117th Congress. Um, <laughs> it has been, um, and we've heard this from multiple staffers, a um, legislative session like none other. There have been a number of things distracting and um, big world events happening and it has not been the um, most direct pass, <laughs> to, to put it mildly. And uh, Mike, I, I saw you laugh when I, I first put this up. Um, Mike or Susan, if you want to weigh in on this at all, please feel free to. So You're doing a great job. Keep it up. <laughs> well, and, and Mike has got more experience uh, on this. And this has been a uh, full Congress. I think I got, I was involved in the Congress I first got on the board of FASD, no fast FASD United, and it was much more traditional, um, I think. Uh, and this, this is a excellent visual of the way we felt, I think, for the <laughs> past two years. And I just, before we go any further, I know that we have so many 
of you on, you know, on today's Zoom webinar that have participated in this craziness. And I just want to thank you. It's been an incredible, uh, incredible uh, journey. And we just had one shortly uh, before we got on um, this, this one um, with uh, uh, staff from a member of Texas. So uh, I, I think our goal, Jen, will be to meet with every, if we have, I don't know how many we're up to, and maybe we have a slide on it, but uh, every single member of Congress and or their staff um, at some point and uh, in that craziness. Because, you know, it's not just the RESPECT Act, it's much more than the RESPECT Act. And it's, that's, that's you know, as you see from our thing, we talked about that as our foundation, but it, it uh, this is the foundation, but then it's, there's going to be, we have a new Congress and there's going to be other uh, things to, to build on that foundation. But I don't know if Mike had any comments he wanted to make because he's got more longevity than I do. I would, I would echo that. I was just on the Hill yesterday uh, and dealing with another committee, not not the committee, not not this committee, but the, you know, the health committee and health committees, but another committee that's traditionally very bipartisan, very, very, a lot of longevity. They've been working the issues for years. And I asked them a very simple question. What's up for the 118th? And I met with both the, the Democrat, the, ma the majority and the minority sides. And they both had this, you know, kind of look, here's what we think is going to happen. And that's kind of a first because usually they can tell you, oh, this member is going to do this and this is what we're going to do. And, this, and they're all kind of like doing that. So I guess what, what that might lead to is that is if you like this graphic on the 117th, I'm not so sure what the 118th is going to look like. So um, it, it'll it'll be really interesting. But, you know, if you – I know there's a lot of things, but if you looked at – that's a really good visual. But what's really cool about that visual is if you look at wherever the turns are with respect to our issue – one of you on this helped make them make that turn. One of you helped them point into a different direction. And I think the thing that Susan so aptly pointed out was that we learned, we started this being about the FASD Act two years ago, right? And the RESPECT Act. And all of a sudden, it, it was not just about the act. It's about getting members informed who had, be frank, no idea what was going on. Uh, no idea what was this, no idea about the impact, no idea about your families, no idea about your practices, no idea about the nature of this thing called FASD. And I think that is one of the biggest accomplishments because I've never experienced this kind of feeling where that education has happened. So that's my comment at this point. Well, thanks, Mike. And I, you know, we've done uh, over 400 meetings at this point with legislators, and, and I think that's just a really um, a, a testament to uh, the power of this movement uh, that we were well, able to get that done. And I, I think I, I did want to add so I think, you know, the, the thing that happens to is having been in this business, you know, I was involved with a in, in, with a change that Congress made a significant change that they made in 2010, a particular program that affected me and the businesses that I was involved in, and quite frankly, Native American peoples in terms of economic development. They made a different, they made a decision in 2010, and I have a dog trying to get up on my lap here, but in 2010, that was very counter to all of that. It took 10 years, it took 10 years, a lot of effort, a lot of people power, a lot of shoe leather, a lot of writing, a lot of different proposals, a lot of different legislation to finally get it changed. And it took, frankly, one esteemed member of Congress passing away in August of 2018. And for those from Arizona, you may know that was John McCain. And it took another member of Congress, Senator Claire McCaskill from Missouri, to lose her seat, who were absolute opponents to this event. And it wasn't until then that the, the thing that happened. Now, are we going to take 10 years? Uh, no, I think there's some good news that maybe 
and, and you're getting ready to show the next graph. Could you go to the next graphic? Because I know what the next graphic looks like. It's so cool. It is so cool. Sure. Oh, that, you know, yeah, that's that is really cool because what we have is, and we kind of talked about this yesterday among the, the staff and the board and the policy committee was that we are now positioned where we need to get on a vehicle. We've done, you've done, you've done everything you possibly can in terms of being from being a royal pain in your member's side or staffer's side to uh, writing things, to talking things, to meeting people, to getting organizations, over 300 organizations to sign up to this. And in one year, in, well, in two years, we're at the point where, okay, what can we do? What can we do to get this baby across the line? How, you know, and I think that's something that we need to kind of talk about that. What, what can we do and so forth and where we're going to go because you've done everything you can. It's now in the political hands of what's going to happen and it's on a vehicle. And so what do we do? Um, you, if you're keeping up with politics, you know, and you're glued to watching C-SPAN, there's two avenues this is going to go. Either A, we're going to get a continuous, most of our language is tied up in an appropriations language, an appropriations bill. And A, we can either going to have yet another continuing resolution on December 16th to go to move us into the next year, uh, which is not something that is ideal for a government at all, quite frankly, uh, or... Um, or we're going to go go ahead with it. Uh, so those are two choices. And what we need to do now is, uh, and what the FASD staff is going to do now is position and come up with a little strategy. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, about what we need to do going forward. I can tell you across the board, each of you, if if what can you do to help with this? It's time for you to write a little note. And I don't know if there's a slide going with this. I haven't seen the whole deck, but if there's a slide with this, but what you can do is sure. remember that staffer you met with two years ago, one year ago, last month, today. Uh, remember about keeping in touch with them? Remember that email address of theirs? Send them a note. And all the note has to say is, hey, uh, wishing you the happiest of holidays to account for all the different folks that celebrate this the different religions that celebrate this different holiday. But hey, we're wishing you the happiest of holidays. Really appreciate the time we've got had to meet with you. Uh, just wanted to let you know, you know, whatever you can do to help us going forward, we'd really appreciate it. It'd be a great little, a great little, you know, Christmas gift at the end of the year. Some to that effect that effect. Some to that effect are just really natural, just you, your how you would write it, how you'd send a note to your mom your daughter, your son, your dad, whatever. Hey, appreciate you being there. Thank you very much. FASD still is very important to us. We appreciate the time you've taken to help us with that. You want to add anything to that, Jen, on, 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 on that, along that line? Yeah, I think we've been advised that a, a soft approach right now, um, this meeting that we did with the, the legislator from Texas um, just prior to this call, uh, the legislative aide that we met with, uh, he was got on the call already talking about how he was um, gearing up to be stressed out and overwhelmed in the next three weeks. Um, Julia Rivera was there and I can see her nodding. Um, this is a crunch stress time for our members of House and Senate and the legislative staff that served them um, you know, we want relationships with them. And so just a, a soft, gentle, we're doing the soft sell with them. This might seem a little disjointed and um, it, we've got some more slides coming up on what we can do next. Part of that is because about 20 minutes before this call, we got a text from Senator Murkowski's office giving us some additional marching orders. So I had to go back in and, and, and kind of change things. So I apologize in advance for that. Um, what we've heard about the Omni um, is that originally um, Mitch McConnell had signaled that because uh, to get the Omni through, you need 60 votes in the Senate. He had signaled that he would be good with the Omni um, he, pre, um, pre election. 
subsequent to the elections because the R's didn't perform the way that they had anticipated. Um, he has now said, mm, I don't know. I'm going to go back and I'm going to talk to uh, Republican leaders and, and see where they are. And so um, that's where we may go either Omni or continuing resolution. Um, that's not an FASD Respect Act thing. That's a politics thing. That's why they call it politics. And, you know, if the roles were reversed, the Dems would probably be doing the same thing. Like that's just, that is how the game is played. Um, and that's the unfortunate part of, you know, we were talking about the straight line going to the White House, you get through this check mark, you get through that check mark, you get through that check mark, and then everything's good. It doesn't work like that. That's why they call it politics. So this is where we're kind of waiting to see what's going to happen. Um, if we get into a continuing resolution, then it looks like we're going to have to reintroduce early next year. And um, reintroducing early is important because then we can capitalize on the wave that we already have. And we go back and we ask all those people that have co-sponsored to re-co-sponsor. We go back and ask all of those uh, people that have been involved. We connect back with them. And that's why this holiday letter is so important because we want to keep those doors open. We want to set the stage for either at the end of the year saying, oh my gosh, thank you so much. We got the Respect Act passed. This is fabulous. Or hey, let's meet in January. We want you to co-sponsor, right? So it's keeping those doors and those communication paths open. Um, we did get a, a number of new co-sponsors added on in November. It was a good month for us. Uh, we were up to 71 in the House and 10 in the Senate. And again, let me remind you that in previous iterations of this bill uh, that have been introduced over the, year, over the years, the most we've ever had co-sponsoring is nine combined between the House and Senate. So 81 combined between the House and Senate, that's pretty stinking good. I'll take it. Um, we added uh, Senator Tammy Baldwin from the great state of Wisconsin. There, thank you very much, uh, Wisconsin Advocates and Jackie for getting, that, uh, getting her in play. She's a key player because she sits on the help committee. More about that in just a little bit. Um, we added in five co-sponsors in the house, um, which is uh, exciting. And we're getting more of a mix of R's and D's, which is good. We, we need to have that mix, particularly with the house going R for next year, right? We're gonna need to really focus on our Republican members of Congress uh, and getting more of them on board. We've got a great base with the D's. Let's work on the R's. Um, looking at our calendar in terms of timeline for getting things done, um, clock is ticking. Um, it doesn't mean that the House and Senate can't extend their schedule, um, but there is um, minimal time left for them to either get the Omni through or do a continuing resolution. Um, the current continuing resolution, because that's what they did, they continued on, they did a continuing resolution, which basically means the budget just continues right? Um, Susan, correct, or Mike, correct me if I'm oversimplifying this, um, but it just means the budget continues from one year to the next. Um, they don't add in new appropriations, new things. Um, that expires on December 16th. So I would say on or around December 16th, really be looking at your inbox, because if there's things we need to push, things we need to do, um, that's going to be the last minute Russian hustle um, and I don't know if Annette Koonsman is able to make the call today, um, but, uh, you know, she and I were talking yesterday. She She's on. Got, okay. She just got legislation passed in, um, uh, worked with a, a number of people to get legislation passed in the state of California on FASD. And all their work and preparation and things that went so well and right and good came down to a last minute, her writing emails at the airport while she was flying out um, because something tweaked at the last minute and a deadline. And, and that is, that's politics. It's you prep and you prep and you prep and you do and you do and you do. And then you get thrown a curveball and you have to react. And, and that's kind of where we are in these lingering days, uh, the last remaining days of the 117th. So I just wanted to share that, share that calendar. Um, 
again, the, the House and Senate session, they may extend until the new um, Senate, uh, House and Senate are called in in January. Um, they may cut it off exactly, um, you know, before Christmas um, remains to be seen. That's what's planned now. So keep your wits about you, your ears about you, and be checking your email around the 16th. Um, so next steps, and this is where we kind of had to kind of sh really shift things from what we knew from yesterday until to what we knew 20 minutes ago. <laughs> if your senator, and this is specifically uh, applies to senators, not representatives, if your senator is on the help committee or is currently a co-sponsor of legislation, ask them to reach out to Chair Murray um, the Democrat from Washington State, um, you know, I'll be reaching out to her too, um, or um, uh, Minority uh, Burr, um, if they're a Republican, and push them because we need something done on FASD this year. We need something done on FASD this legislative session. Um, and those are the specific words you need to use. We need something done, not we need the Respect Act passed, not, um, you know, please consider this legislation, blah, 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 keep it really simple. We need something done on FASD this year. Um, we don't want anything can, getting can, lost in translation. Can <laughs> yeah, you go exactly. back to the slide? Can you go back to the slide that kind of says uh, who the the senators are that are? I've got the, that the... coming up just, just next. I've got a slide okay. that lists them all out. Um, and Kathy White, you had a question? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I don't think you're muted, but I can't hear you. You want to put it in the chat? Okay, perfect. All right. With the um, with the members of the House and Senate that um, are your House members that are a co-sponsor, your senators that might not be a co-sponsor, or your House members that you connected with and they haven't co-sponsored yet. That's where that happy holidays message from Mike comes into play. We want to keep them engaged. We want to keep them connected. We want to be that little voice where they're like, oh, yeah, this is, you know, it's, it, oh, it's Jen Wisdall. She's that mom from Washington State. Yep, I got to, she's that mom from out by Puyallup. I, I need to remember, oh, FASD, FASD, FASD. So it's really just keeping us, uh, keeping us engaged with them. So. Um, and of course, the slide that I needed um, is hidden because this is my day today. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing and pull that slide up with a list of who's on the committee. Give me just a second here. While you're doing that, I want to share a story. Can I share a story? Please share a story. Mike. It's a very personal. It's a very personal story. Um, so for those of you and 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 Rebecca, you share in this. OK, I, I see that smiling face, but you share in this. Um, uh, Rebecca was our, our speaker at at the at the ball and my wife. There are many of you who have met my that when you came to D.C., you met my wife, my wife, the Renee, the, the chauffeur, if you will, and, and everything else. But she's the one that helped get you from one side to the other side or from whatever that kind of a thing. Well, we have a daughter. She, we have a, I, it's a we, uh, it's my bonus daughter. I don't use the step word. It's my bonus daughter and everything else. And we noticed, we've noticed over time that she's had a few challenges and we've never figured out why those challenges are. Well, you all know that, you know, at best, you're going to find out you're pregnant, what, six weeks in, eight weeks in maybe. Uh, I think you probably can figure out where this is going, don't you? Well, you know, my wife was not unlike wives or, or folks when she got pregnant with Christine. Um, you know, she was barely high school, just barely graduated out of high school. She was that party girl and everything else who had to grow up really, really quick as a single mom who was suddenly pregnant. Um, and because of, and I'm going to get emotional, but because of what you had to say, Rebecca, my wife on the drive home, and this is deeply personal, said you know what we need to talk to christine and we need to talk to her about how we're going to go and i said you know what makes sense you know what's cool about fasd we've got heather then then heather french that can help you we've got folks in alaska that work the program where my daughter is she's she's up in she's up near uh she's in north pole right now 
And I said, and we can we can go with this. I want to tell you all, all of you on here that say, I know, I know every day you're dealing with this issue deeply personal. Uh, I want to thank you all because quite frankly, if it weren't for you, if it weren't for what you all do, we would never have thought through this. I mean, it was kind of like a, one of those aha moments. And guess what age she is, Rebecca? She's, you know, she's 31. Oh, going, going awesome. you know. So it's it's it. See how late it was. I mean, it, it's never too late, mm -hmm. and just those things. So what you're doing is making a difference. It made one difference. One person on this line is probably going to make a big difference. And I'll keep the folks up to date on where we are with this and everything else. It's mm -hmm. it's we're kind of Renee's kind of trying to think through how she's going to have the talk. She's going to have to figure that out. But okay. I just want to say thank you, y'all. I mean, that's where we're going to go. And and yeah. Heather, you're probably going to get a phone call at some point or or Chris or, you know, one of those things. But but I just want to thank you. All right. Back over thank to you, Jen. You. Thanks, Mike. Jen didn't know this was coming, by the way. None of the FASD staff knew this was coming. So yeah. there you go. He shares a lot with us uh, and we do with him. But thank you for sharing that, Mike, and, and all sure. the love to Renee. Um, thank you. Yeah. That's, uh, but that's the power of telling our story, right? It, the power of sharing about FASD and in sharing the lived experience of people with FASD um, is that it, it makes it relatable. Um, you know, it's um, I and think I have a very to say important that we've had, piece. We've had, we've had some of that happen in our meetings over the last two years with staff and, and uh, members of Congress. I mean, it, it's so, and the more you have those conversations, the more you're going to have that happen, and it's going to become much more relatable um, to them. All right, I've got my slide pulled up. Goodness, I have never been so ill prepared for a PowerPoint in my life. I apologize. That is not how I like to operate. So this is the current list of um, the the senate health committee on the right hand side there so if you have um if if you live exist or have family members in any of those states um you want to reach out and urge them um and i use the term urge because i saw what you have um uh what you put in the chat there um uh kathy um urge them to connect with Murray and Burr and let them know that we need to do something on FASD this legislative session, right? So if you are in any of those states um, or if your member uh, of the Senate, one of your members of the Senate, Senate or both your members of the Senate, uh, in the case of uh, you know Hawaii, Maine, um, there's a couple of them out there where we have both um, Minnesota. Um, have them reach out and uh, to the the health committee chairs and which are Murray and Burr and urge them to get it done this year. Jen. Yeah. Um, what, regardless of how this goes, whether it gets carried into next year or decided in December, do you have in mind when you will be approaching to, to educate the new people coming in, the new senators and house members coming in? When will you be educating them about FASD? I mean, we, we will do that too from our side, but do you have a plan for that? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is, once they get into office, the plan is to continue the outreach the way we have been, because that is educating them. I mean, if we look at the anatomy of the advocacy calls we're doing, the majority of that call has been education. It's been, you know, just so we're on the same page, uh, legislative assistant to uh, Lisa Murkowski, that's a bad example, but um, can we give you some information about FASD before we get started so that we're all, um, you know, having a similar understanding of the issue? 
And then we talk about the one in 20 statistic and we talk about the ways in which FASD impacts and, and different populations that it impacts differently. Um, and, and that's something that um, the constituents do also through telling their stories, um, you know, through talking about, hey, I live in this town uh, in your district and here's the challenges that I face. Um, as a person living with FASD, or here's the struggles that we've had in getting supports for uh, my family member with FASD. So yeah, the plan is to, uh, right off the bat, let, let's get out there and get moving because, um, you know, we've got momentum now, we've got buy-in now. Um, there, there's no need, uh, except for over the next couple of weeks, because we know they're going to be stressed out, they're going to be busy, we don't want to alienate, and there's really, you know, unless they are, um, you know, on the Senate at this point, not much they can do about it. Um, so that's kind of, does that, does that answer your question, Lynn? Just a couple of comments real quick. Yes, um, yes thank you. Well. And then just a quick comment here. Uh, Bernie Sanders is slated from Vermont, is slated to take over as chair of the HELP Committee. So heads up on that. Um, uh, um, what, uh, um, oh, and uh, Patty Murray will go over and take over it, and she's going to be the chair of the all very powerful appropriations money committee so whatever efforts we can really focus on on murray will help because what that does frankly takes one more to do offer a list for next year so that'll be kind of important to talk to and then sanders uh just heads up for those from vermont that you know if we have to go into next year we're clearly going to want to engage senator sanders's office again um, funny story, last time I was in D.C., I was getting some food in the um, the, the Senate uh, cafeteria and um, walked by the salad bar and I'm kind of oblivious to space. I'm, I'm a little clumsy and uh, just about ran over this nice older gentleman with white hair. Um, <laughs> and I looked, I'm like, wait, there's no mittens. But yeah, that's Bernie Sanders. So that was that was kind of cool for me. But um I think, you know, I'm, I'm looking in the chat here and I'm seeing some questions and I want to make sure that we're, we're making the distinction between the House and the Senate. Your representatives are not the people we're targeting right now. Representatives, if they're a representative or a congressman, we, those are the, we're wishing you a happy holidays. Um, thank you very much. Your senators, if they have senator in their name and they're a co-sponsor or they sit on committee, those are the ones we're urging to reach out to Murray and Burr and um, urge them to do something on FASD this year. Um, that was the guidance that we got directly from Murkowski's office. So um, that's the guidance we wanna follow because they really want us to get this put through this year. Um, so does that help clarify? And, and there's no stupid questions. Um, I, I saw that in the chat too. Um, you know, politics is kind of like um, me watching football. I, I don't watch football. I'm not, I, I don't bear, I barely understand the game. <laughs> and Can so I when people start talking football stats or they start talking players and teams and stuff like that, I don't pick up on the conversation. I don't necessarily understand it. It doesn't mean I'm not smart. It means I just, it's not my jam. Politics, if people are talking politicians and talking parties and talking uh, committees and, um, you know, continuing resolutions and all, you know, it's a whole other language that we're speaking to. And you're not expected to be fluent in it. And this is why we have these kind of meetings is so that we can hopefully bring your understanding up just a little bit or maybe a lot either way um, and, and, and have conversations around those because honestly, if you're having a question on it and I say this over and over and over in advocacy, if you have a question and need some clarification on something, 
I guarantee there are other people who have questions and need clarification on it too. Um, guarantee. Jen, there's a there's a string of questions between Michelle and Rebecca that I'd like to kind of talk about. Rebecca, Please. I mean, it's a very good question, and um, the stupid question, no stupid questions, Rebecca. Why is New York not one of those states? I don't get politics, but I'm learning. And and the reason, okay, so members there are. I don't know, pick a number, a dozen committees, <laughs> you know, there's probably more, right? Major committees on, on the House and the Senate. Um, and so, and members are restricted to being members of a maximum of about three committees. So, so what happens is the leadership, once that person walks in, there's a couple of things that happen. Number one, if you're a doctor, <laughs> chances are you're going to be put in something that has to do with the doctoring field that you're in. So health may be an effort. If you're an, a, a, a fighter pilot in the United States Air Force, you're probably going to get put on Armed Services Committee because they're going to take advantage. If you were a uh, if you are a rail person, you're going to put on transportation and infrastructure. So what what the, the leadership naturally tries to do is take advantage of your expertise, because if you can take advantage of your expertise, chances are they're appealing to a large number of the constituents in the area. The second thing they're going to do is look at the platform that the person like. I, I know I happen to know that uh, Amy Takuda from Hawaii is a former educator. So she's probably going to be on educa the education committee and the house committee, but that was a large has been a large significant portion of her platform. So she's developed expertise over a, a period of time. And like anything else, you all would probably want the best qualified person doing the job in Congress rather than somebody. I mean, we wouldn't want somebody deciding health policy who. <laughs> Uh, flew airplanes like I did. Okay, you probably would want them to be educated, have a piece, of, understand it, and so forth. So at least have an, a, an understanding of the issues and so forth. So that's why that's how they get. So there's a chance that you know in in the great state of New York, there may or may your senators would that, is that Schumer and I'm forget who the other person is. Well, Schumer. Now here's the other thing for both Rebecca. And for, uh, I think it's Michelle that's asking the question. Yeah. Um, one of your senators is Senator Schumer. He is the majority leader. He's by, by default, he's, he's emeritus member of every committee and is the most powerful person in the United States Senate today. So, you know, if I were to add a note, I would say Senator Schumer should get a little note that says, exactly what it says he he's not a member of the committee but he is the leader of the senate at the majority of the senate that person would be important as would senator mitch mcconnell if you're from the great state of kentucky that might deserve one and for michelle uh, illinois dick durbin is the second ranking democrat in the united states senate extremely powerful uh, i've met with him very straightforward very willing to listen and very genuine, very heartfelt. And considering how I remember, you know, eight years ago, we screwed up that meeting. He was very forgiving in the long run about what we were trying to get done and actually overlooked some of the serious mistakes we made in judgment in terms of some of the things. And was very ultimately very supportive of what, what we were trying to do. So I think Dick Durbin, again, maintains a lot of power a lot of status and make should be one of those that you might want to send a, le a letter to. So the exception is if they're in a leadership position like Durbin and, and Schumer or McConnell, uh, and I don't know who the number two is on, under McConnell, that would be the people that you would probably want to send a little note to also. And I, I want to add, um, we know that, um, as Jen said, Senator McConnell uh, was inclined to go with uh, getting the Omni done this Congress, and and I just read that he's having lunches with members of his uh, conference, his caucus, this week and next to get the feel. So if you have uh, in your state a Republican senator, uh, I think the message could be that we want a budget now. We want to have, uh, we don't want a concurrent resolution. We want it now. Let them know that uh, because those Republican senators are the ones that are going to 
um, it, because they're they're going to need 60. And if you go, go back to that slide, Jen, you, we've got some uh, on the health committee. How many, um, well, or, uh, how many the ones that have the senators as our co-sponsors? And, you know, and it, the Respect Act is only one little piece that's going to that's going to go. But we've got Senator Murkowski. Um, oh, we're, so we got Senator Murkowski. We've got Senator Moran. We've got Senator Collins. Uh, we've got Senator, uh, even though they're not on the health committee, Senator Capito. Um, so those could, you know, let them know that that uh, we want the, uh, the bill, the Omni pass rather than a continuing resolution. Cause they're the ones that are gonna, cause that's, they're gonna need 60 votes. They're gonna have to, I mean, we've, already, we've got, they gotta come up with, you know, whatever the balance of that is, but that would be also my recommendation that we want, we really want this Omni. Cause I think I'm reasonably optimistic if we get the Omni that we're gonna have something in the Omni. Yeah, the, the Omni is our track to getting it done this year. The continuing resolution is our track to uh, getting it done in the next session. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as, as somebody who has eat, breathed and sleep this, I'm using the tenses wrong, sorry, but uh, has been at this uh, very strong <laughs> for two years. Um, I would love to have this done this, this legislative session. And, we, have know, other, we have other priorities we want to work on next Congress. So yeah, 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 yeah. What other questions do we? Let's see. Marshall has not budged. Are we still trying to convince Charlotte? No, we're trying to get Charlotte to retire and get a new legislative staff in there. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, Senator Marshall has a staff person that is. Um, not favorable to our cause. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll have to, we'll have to work on her. Um, yeah. And, and Julia's right. Julia has something in the chat about needing to reach out to everyone, whether they're co-sponsors, uh, whether we've met with them, being soft and gentle and wishing them a happy holiday. Um, yeah. I, I think um, if you've got a Senator on the help committee, that is where we're a little bit more insistent that, um, or a senator that's a co-sponsor, um, we need um, we need something done on FASD this legislative session. But otherwise, it's the soft, gentle, keeping the door open, keeping the communication lines open, um, building that relationship. Because this, at its core, is you building a relationship with the staffers that work in that legislator's office. And even if that legislator is never going to budge or do anything uh, for us, uh, for the FASD movement, um, those legislative staffers change offices. It's like musical chairs in there. They change all the time. And so um, you never know when they're gonna pop up in a different legislator's office that will be more favorable. So we don't wanna burn bridges with them. We don't wanna, um, you know, we, we want good relationships with all of them. And then eventually, you know, if you look at the majority of your legislators, they've spent time working as staffers. Um, so, you know, this is a way we're building a foundational relationship with FASD too. Any other questions or do I uh, release you 10 minutes sure. early and uh, give you 10 minutes of your life back? <laughs> and feel free to unmute yourself and or, or pop it in the chat if that's easier. Jen, I wondered, um, is there a way to track where the aides go if they leave an office and like we've been working with Charlotte K uh in Burr's office and do we have a way to know where when she lands someplace where she'll go because he's returned so there is a uh, legistorm has a um like a weekly newsletter that i follow that uh, usually gives a heads up when aides are kind of the, the um not the lower level aides, but the higher level aides are moving from place to place so sometimes i can get some notifications there 
Um, sometimes it's a matter of getting on a meeting and going, oh, yeah, we met with you when you were with, with uh, representative so-and-so's office. Um, yeah, it, there are mechanisms to do that, that um, large lobbying firms are able to pay for and take advantage of. Um, they are- We'll count on you for telling us. Right. <laughs> I will do my best to keep track of that. Uh, Michelle Traeger said to put air tags on the aids. I like that. I, I think that's a, <laughs> I'd like to see that happen, but uh, you know, it's it, not burning bridges, um, keeping connected, I, I, I think is a key tenet here. And, and everybody has been so wonderful about doing that so far. So any other questions, uh, thoughts, suggestions, um, concerns? Then this is Marilyn, and I, Marilyn? you know, I focus on Colorado. However, I'm in Florida, so I I'm not really up on who's doing things in Florida. Do you have a suggestion of? And I'm in Daytona Beach. I can do a little research, but if you let me know who I might contact, I would love for you nice. to contact Jen Worden at the Florida. Oh, Center. I know her. I know. Okay. I mean, I know of Jen. Um, so she, yeah, I'm not surprised. But I, <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I mean, who to, who in you mentioned representative? I see your list. Well, not this one, but one of them listed Florida as needed. Um, yeah, yeah. I would reach out and just the the happy holidays message there. Um, if you definitely to the ones in Colorado, um, but uh, whoever district you're in in Florida reaching out, introducing yourself, wishing them a happy holidays and letting them know that uh, any efforts that could be put into FASC legislation would be very much appreciated. Okay, yeah, so um, just a general. Yep, exactly. They may, ne they may never have heard of it or yeah. are there, has this ever been discussed in a way that everybody's heard about it, if it's introduced? It, I mean, unfortunately, it doesn't do work think? that way. Um, yeah, they, we're, we're, we're not so lucky to, uh, to have that happen. Um, yeah, there's no, um, you know, you can do a congressional briefing, but that doesn't mean everybody's going to attend. Um, yeah, it, it really is, the onus is on us to reach out individually. Um, and there are some things we can do and that we're looking at hopefully for next year that um, may help um, reinforce that messaging on a bigger scale, you know, getting multiple people in the same room. Um, but yeah, this really is, um, this is the way of it. Um, it can't just be one organization, you know, one person doing it. It really does take everyone reaching out to their specific lawmakers to get it to happen. All, all really what I do is kind of coordinate that and, and give support to people where they need it. Um, but the, the vast majority of the effort is being done by all of you in the field. And unfortunately, that's how, that's how the sausage gets made. Um, it's, it's grassroots lobbying at its finest. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll at least reach out to who represents Daytona Beach Fantastic. Um, and just, I feel like spreading awareness to everybody you meet helps really. <laughs> you are absolutely which I kind of do. Correct. Yep. Thanks. Thank you, Marilyn. And thanks for the work that you've been doing in, in Colorado and, and uh, for what you're going to do in, in Florida. Appreciate it. Okay. Any other questions or concerns or, or thoughts before we wrap up? I gotta apologize in advance for my husband in the background. Usually we try and coordinate our Zoom calls, but you might be hearing some very gripping commentary on medical devices in the background right now. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, so we will be back um, between, what's the date? Between Christmas and New Year's. So mm -hmm. 
uh, the 28th of December. So if you yes. are, uh, we're either having a, a victory party or a, a strategic planning session uh, coming up on the 28th of December. And, you know, we get some pushback in, about, you know, why do you have the meeting uh, in December, that last week of December when everybody's on holiday and everybody's on vacation? And I do it really out of symbolism. Um, we cannot rest on policy because if we rest on policy, anything that we fought for can easily be taken away. You know, Centers for Excellence, I'm looking at them, right? Um, policy can't, it's not a one and done thing. Oh, I contacted my legislature, my legislator, I'm done. Um, it, it doesn't work like that. It's a constant evolving um, relationship that you're building both with policy and with your lawmakers. And so, you know, there may be five of you that show up to the December meeting. Hey, cool. Thank you for showing up. But we're still going to do it because the fact remains that policy, you, you can't take a break from policy. You can shift your tax tactics, but it needs to continue and the push needs to continue no matter what you're doing. So um, hopefully we'll see you there. Hopefully you will also get a well-deserved break over the holidays and, uh, you know, enjoy your milk and cookies and time with family. Um, and I just really appreciate everybody who took time out of their schedules <coughs> to be here today and, and hang out with us. Um, I'm going to throw my email in the chat. Um, you know, it might be possible that there's somebody on the planet that doesn't have my email address yet. Um, and uh, really reach out if you have any questions or thoughts or concerns or ideas uh, for what we could be doing differently or better. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Keep your Thanks, fingers everybody. crossed. Happy holidays, all. Happy holidays. Thank you.